Hi, I'm Jen, and it's Sunday, so that must make this Sunday Stitch. And this Sunday we're talking about tension issues and how you can check for them and how you can correct them. Um, we're working in stockinette stitch in knitting, and I have this piece that we'll work on next, but first let's take a look at a piece of stockinette knitting that has some tension issues like this one. When you have inconsistent tension and you're knitting in stockinette, you often see your knitting turn out kind of bubbly. This one certainly has some bubbling issues. If you take the piece and, and stretch it out, you can see some of the stitches are were made with looser tension they're larger, they're puffier, they're bigger uh, than all the stitches around them, and as it collapses, it bubbles out. If you look at the back side, if you look at the reverse stockinette, the pearl side, you'll see these spots in the knitting where the, where the pearl bumps seem to separate. And uh, that's called a gutter row, where you have, like the gutter uh, a, on the side of a, a bowling lane, it's also an indicator that you've got inconsistent tension that you went from tight to loose to tight and so on. So this is not blocked and if it was blocked a lot of these issues would improve. They would never completely disappear. It certainly would look better with a nice firm block on it but let's talk about what we can do as we knit to avoid these issues at least as much as possible. Here I have uh, a light colored wool and I wanted it to be light colored because I'm marking it in certain lengths with a nice little sharpie marker. Uh, you're going to need the marker some, and something to measure length. These blocks are one inch blocks and as you can see I've got this little next section it's four inches long. In my previous row, which I had made on the wrong side, on the purl side, I have a one stitch and then three unmarked and then the next. So this was also four inches long section of my yarn and it got me one, two, three, four, five stitches. Now on the next row, let's see how I do. Let's see. Okay, so here is a nice marked stitch. We'll call that one. Right, so we got one, one, two, three, four, and five. I guess I'm doing pretty good, pretty consistent. Can you see that? Now, uh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to make it inconsistent. Ha ha. Now some things that can affect the tension of your knitting. First of all, the most common problem in knitting is that if you have inconsistent tension, first thing to check is the tension as you knit the same as the tension when you purl. Often cases the answer will be no. Um, if you are not as confident with your purl stitch, it will tend to be tighter or looser than the knit stitch, which is why I did the first one on the purl side and the second one on the knit side. The reason why your tension versus your the tension versus your knit and your purl side can differ can be because of the angle that you hold the needles. Like let's say you're knitting and 
da. and I like to hold my knitting needles about like that as you can see switch real quick to the pearl side now if I was purling and my knitting needles were held uh, at a steeper angle to each other that would usually give a person a tighter tension if you hold the knitting needles more up. <laughs> now, let me take these out. Second thing to take a look at would be let me turn it back to the next side, I think. Yes. Um, where on the needles do you tend to work and are you consistent about that when it comes to knits or pearls? I like to work usually somewhere between what is the neck and the tip between where uh, it goes from a pointy edge to the consistent width right there usually usually the more experience the knitter, the more confident the knitter, the closer to these tips they are working. So if you're not as confident in your pearls, you may find that instead of working at the same place, like for me that would be right here, maybe you're working further down because you're not as confident and you don't want your pearl stitches to be sliding off on you. Usually that practice will open up your pearls and make them looser. So check your knitting needle angle and check the uh, where you're working on the needle in the first place. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. Now, just because it's the most common issue to have doesn't mean that it's the issue you're having. If you are a continental knitter, and holding the working yarn in your left hand, then it's very natural for you to keep the yarn usually at least over an index finger and under your middle finger. You may also tension the yarn in some way, let's say maybe like that. But for continental knitters, it's very natural to have some sort of consistency in how they hold the working yarn. If you are working English style and throwing the yarn, it's very common for a beginning knitter to take the yarn, throw it, drop it, and finish the stitch, go into the next one, grab it again, pick it up, throw it. If you're always dropping your working yarn and having to pick it back up, there's no way you're going to have consistent tension. So if you are an English style knitter and if you're if you've got the yarn in your right hand, find a way to tension your yarn somehow. I like this way. It doesn't have to be that way. So that in between stitches when you drop it to manipulate your needles, you haven't dropped it completely because it's still being held on the rest of your hand. Just finding a way to thread the working yarn through your other fingers or around the palm of some way will improve your tension a lot. If you're not having to pick up that yarn, believe me, that'll help. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is something that I call edge anxiety. Some knitters feel a lot less comfortable working on the, on the beginning edge or on the, the ending edge. And their tension changes because mostly because they're worried about losing control of the knitting and losing control of their stitches. So if you're at this very edge and while you normally work your needles right here or at this angle or have a certain tension on the yarn or whatever you may be worried about these stitches falling off so you tend to work on the edges on the very beginning of rows maybe on the very end of the rows at a different place on your needle. These are my little edge knit stitches. Let me go to purl. And then as you 
move into the row, you become more confident, you become less worried about losing track of your stitches, and your work, your work method, evens out. And then you may have some of that edge anxiety over at this edge. So that your edges are either looser or tighter than the middle of your work. But I think that if you can get into the habit and make yourself a little practice piece like this one, where you take your yarn, let's see, get myself some yarn here, and measure out a, a four, five, six, whatever inch section. And give myself a little mark here, and then one, two, three, four, a little mark here. Now these Sharpie markers, you know how dangerous they are with their permanent marks, so when I slide the paper under <laughs> and really mark it up. That's why I get all the marks all over my hands. Get this out of the way. So then keep knitting, make yourself a little practice piece, and give yourself a section like this every once in a while and check your work. I think once you have identified where your problem spots are, they're going to be a lot easier to fix.